Hello, it's Mr. Sorpayas here again, and it's time to do another Blender add-on review video. Today we are going to focus on Fast Carve. Fast Carve is a free add-on made by Matthias, who also has a YouTube channel with nickname Jayanam. I hope I pronounced this stuff correctly. Not. Anyways, he is a game designer who is, among all the other things, focusing also to make tools for Blender, and FastCarve is one of those tools. So, because FastCarve is a free hard surface modeling add-on, you can download it easily by just going to GitHub. I will put the link to the description. You get there this zip file. I hope you are already Blender 2.8 user, because this add-on don't work on 2.79. For that, you need to download an older version of the add-on. I'm not going to guarantee that everything I tell here works in a similar way on the other version of the add-on, because I just didn't test it. You install this add-on in a similar way as you install any Blender add-on. In 2.8, you go to Edit, User Preferences and Add-on tab. There, click Install Add-on button and find the zip file you downloaded. Save the settings if you believe that you are going to need this add-on again after you close Blender. Now, I bet you don't wanna see me playing with some cubes or spheres, so I figured out something to be modeled with this add-on. Actually, there is one specific modern commercial product that is a perfect for any hard surface practicing project you might think of. Those are printers. For some reason those objects don't have common, if you will, body language. They are all different and that makes them to be nice practice models. So now when we know where to find the reference images, we can just start modeling it. Uh, you can find the fast carve settings from this N sidebar, fast carve tab. First I will scale the cube little in edit mode. Then I have to bevel some edges little to make the base shape to be little better. Shortcut for beveling is Ctrl plus B. Add more segments for your bevel by scrolling your middle mouse. Now I'm finally ready to start using fast carve. I, I wanna create hole there to the object and I will do it as a boolean operation and I will use a little cube that is edited to have a correct shape for that hole. Fast carve also allows me to do boolean operations in a similar way as a box cutter add-on, but I don't like very much that process because I wanna see what I'm doing. That's why I use this physical object instead. I will show later with a little bit better what I mean with that. I will do slight edits to that my target object because I need that loop cut later when I keep editing this printer model. Alright, let's move this boolean object in a way that it overlaps the target object. It's okay if it's not perfectly centered because this add-on allows us to symmetrize objects. Now we select the printer model to be the target object from fast carve settings. We select the boolean object then and click difference. And now we have the first hole here. Cool. I need to fix I need to fix some topology things here now because I wanna edit this hole a little bit. Basically I make this loop to go through also this my whole area. Okay, now I need the knife tool, because the idea of this hole was that part of it will be a little bit deeper, so that we have a space here for some mechanical parts. So I will just draw here with the knife tool the face which I'm planning to delete later. But before I will very fast scale these edges to be parallel with each other. Use active element pivot point to make vertices in line with each other. Okay, good. Now I'm ready to delete this area and build it again a little bit differently. So just extrude this edge here and create new faces. Nothing very hard is happening here. The active element pivot point is very handy here also, 
so that we can make it to be symmetrical. Perfect. Then, because my reference printer has here some bevelings, I will add those also here. I think it will be cool. Now, let's check a little bit how to symmetrize objects with this add-on. I will do some random imperfections here and then I try to fix it. The idea is to make this left side of this object to be a reference and then mirror it to this broken right side to make this object to be good again. You need to look carefully this axis widget to be able to determine which button you should be clicking. I had sometimes with this add-on some problems with Undo, so it's better to click the correct button at first. And I clicked wrong one. Let's Undo and then let's click the correct one instead. The symmetry thing made for me here in the center of the object this additional loop. It's okay. Now I wanna model for this printer a cover with black plastic. Again, this is not kind of part of the add-on, but I think it's cool and this kind of stuff you have to do if you do hard surface modeling. So let's just do it. I duplicate this area to create new separate object with P key out from those faces. Let's very fast add some materials here. Then I go to modifiers because I wanna have some thickness for this new object. I will do it with the solidify modifier. This is not part of the fast carve add-on, but I just wanna do this because it looks cool. So why not? When it's good, I just apply the modifier. Just some little fixes there and there, and then use the symmetry tool to perfect the shape. I will also join it back to the original object. The reason for that is that I wanna use the bevel tool from the fast carve. By that way I can have the exactly similar beveling all around my object. By the way, fast carve don't remember my bevel settings, so if I for some reason need to use bevel somewhere else, I have to remember the correct number I was planning to use. Now, let's look a little bit of these primitive settings which allows us to draw shapes that will be cut out from the target object. As said, I'm not a huge fan of these even when I believe that this is the most advanced feature of this add-on. I believe it took actually quite much time to code this out. So, to use those you need to click the primitive mode button. You know that you are in primitive mode when you see this text here at the bottom. It's a guide text and shows for you some of the shortcuts you can use. This add-on kind of steals some of the shortcuts Blender is using and replaces the functionality of those with new ones. I have to say it caused some confusion for me because suddenly I wasn't able to anymore move my object with J key or edit it properly. So if you wanna do something with your object you need to go out from this primitive mode by pressing ESC. So, as you can see, I can change the add-on status with these shortcuts. See how the add-on is changing the drop menus when I click the corresponding shortcut. To draw a primitive, I use Ctrl plus left mouse button. Now here is coming the reason why I don't like these primitives very much. To adjust the depth of the hole, I have here this draw distance value. It will change the deepness of the future boolean operation. It can be a little tricky though to be able to know how deep I exactly wanna make it. It's for me much easier to use real 3D primitives to make the holes because then I would visually be able to see how I'm going to do the hole. Also, if you change the value or rotate your viewport screen to change the boolean operation, it does not refresh the operation value. 
at current version of the add-on you need to do something in the viewport before you do the boolean operation, for example move the 3D cursor location. After that the boolean will happen to the direction of your viewport was facing to, uh, with the value you added to draw distance setting. I hope this will change so that I would not need to do anything additional after rotating screen or changing values. This snapping setting is very handy. Okay, so now I changed the draw distance value here to be better than previously and move the 3D cursor to activate the changes and then just control left click to do the boolean. Okay, so let's play a little bit with the primitive mode. I can go to primitive mode by selecting the target object and then clicking the primitive mode button and then I can change the shape I'm drawing uh, with this drop menu. And no, okay, I need to activate this. So uh, now if I control left click, I can draw, start drawing the primitive. Now I'm in this polygon mode, so I can uh, start clicking here and drawing the shape. But sadly, there is no undo. So uh, if I do a mistake, for example, like this, then the <laughs> it's like that. I need to start over if I ever wanna do kind of finish it. Also, for some reason, it might start drawing the shape to wrong place. So I can't actually see what I'm drawing because half of the shape is inside of my object. So, okay, what did I do? Uh, uh, I think I will need to start over. I will load the project again because I was able. I, I tried to delete the polygon thing, but then I accidentally deleted the, uh, <laughs> the object. Okay, so let's go to primitive mode again by clicking this primitive mode button. And then let's select here rectangle this time. And I can change the mode by pressing M button, just like these tooltips are telling me. So control left click to draw the rectangle. It's again inside of my shape. I don't know why, but I can move it by pressing J. Alright, it's here now. And now I can start adjusting set the settings. By the way, there is a problem, another problem with this uh, primitive mode that I cannot edit this my shape. If it's like that, then it's like that. I cannot select these vertices and move them. Anyways, now control left click to create the boolean operation with the settings I selected. And it didn't do what I was hoping it to do, and the problem is not because of this add-on, it's actually because of Blender Booleans, which this add-on is calling. So I think I need to manually do the shape here. So I will just very fast fill this area with new faces. Okay, so what's my conclusion about this add-on? Uh, I wanna say that these primitive polyline things are not so useful as I was hoping those would be. Uh, there certainly is some situation where you might wanna do those, but I think it's actually most of the time more handy to create real objects and then use them as a boolean object. For example, uh, okay, if I, I can do it here, uh, if I start drawing here, control left click, and I will do a polygon thing, Th there is a this problem, uh, I cannot control where this thing actually is appearing, control left click to end it, so it appears here in the center of the object, so I cannot see where I'm drawing, so I need to press ESC to delete that, and instead I need to draw it here, control left click again, and then Throw it here, and then I don't. I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just 
doing something. Control left click, so I have it here. And now what I need to do is to move it. So I press J to move it. And I move it here. And then I wanna move it here. So I press J and Y. But actually I cannot lock the movement to along Y axis. So this object is kind of a fake geometry. It's not a real geometry, it's just something. And I hope I will be able to also edit this. I wanna select this vertex for example and then move it here if I wanna do some uh, slight edits to it. But currently the add-on don't allow me to do so. Also what I would like to do now is to scale this because this is a little bit too big. If I wanna have this same shape but very much smaller, I cannot do it currently. Uh, what I need to do now is to select here this create mode and then control left click and it made this uh, object here with the settings I uh, selected but now I need to delete that uh, polygon thing and then now I can scale this but this is kind of cheating because I would like to if I start doing that drawing thing I actually wanna finish it by drawing no I'm I, I am actually editing real geometry and I would be able to make this shape much faster by extruding a cube instead than first creating the drawing there. So that's why I think this uh, preventive thing is a little bit uh, not needed yet. So I hope it will be better in the future but currently I, I don't recommend using it very much. I said I can just add here cube and then scale it and the do something like that and I have the same shape here much faster done and I can do the edits in a similar way as I did there so th that's my reason why I don't like very much these primitive things uh, but I hope those will be improved and then then in the future th that will be very much more handy. So now if I select this and uh, add here difference I can do the whole there just like expected. But yeah my conclusion about this add-on is that it's useful but it's not perfect and now my blender crashed.